China's leading uh, AI startup DeepSeek reportedly now set to release its latest model, which will have uh, some strong coding abilities. Join us right now with more on the tech and AI world. Stephen Levy, uh, Wired editor at large. Stephen, it's great to see you this morning. Whatever comes from DeepSeek, could it be another one of the, these moments uh, where the industry sort of shudders and says, oh, my goodness, uh, can this all be done, uh, you know, open source? And is everybody else spending too much money? It could be. Uh, people are waiting because, you know, just in advance of this new release, which people expect to happen around the Lunar New Year next month, uh, they released the paper, Deep Seek released the paper, saying that they figured out a new way to train large language models, which is more efficient, doesn't require as many chips, which, as you know, uh, the top AI chips are restricted, being exported from U.S. NVIDIA to, to China. Um, supposedly, their coding abilities, the coding abilities of, you know, version four of DeepSeek is going to handle more complex programs, handle over, you know, complicated tasks the programmers now have to do on their own. And, you know, the, the lower level stuff gets done by AI. And they're very sensitive, these coders, to which model is going to help them the most. They jump around, you know, some months Claude is ahead, some months, you know, Codex, OpenAI is ahead. Uh, so if there actually is a big leap in what you could do in coding, it's going to get a big audience. Stephen, you know, the last time Deep Sea came out, there were then all sorts of accusations, if you recall, uh, that they effectively were stealing code, taking code uh, from others, stealing uh, IP and the like. Do you think we're going to be back at that? Yeah, already we've been hearing that a lot of uh, the, you know, uh, what we're going to see from version four uh, takes advantage of the top level NVIDIA chips that have been smuggled out. Uh, so, and, you know, you know, of course, that we're, the Trump administration has changed its stance. And now they're saying uh, we're going to release maybe not the very top NVIDIA chips, but the next level to, to, to China. Uh, but some people suspect that they're getting the very best. What, what is your sense of just about the, the spending levels at this point? Because part of the question, I think, long term is whether ultimately all of these large language models get commodified uh, to some degree. Well, I think that's that's happening, you know, to, to some degree. And I've been saying for a while that it's really going to be how people translate the models to actually do useful work, which is going to distinguish what one you know company does over the other in the competition. That's why you see uh, OpenAI, you know, Anthropic, uh, Microsoft concentrating on building applications. Um, or extending their developer networks so people could actually make use of this stuff rather than randomly figuring out which tasks to do on their own. Well, so that's my question, though. Who do you think? I mean, you would think that Google would have the, the greatest advantage, I would imagine. Do, do you think that they do in terms of productizing this? And what does that mean long term for some of the independents, the, the open AIs and the anthropics? Right. Anthropic is sort of out there, you know, and open AI to a degree, too. You know, you look at Microsoft. OK, they've got the productivity world and they could build that into, you know, their open AI partnership. And now they're hedging their bets and, you know, looking at other large language models. Um, Google, of course, as, as you mentioned, they've got this search dominance to, to build on. That's why Meta, no matter what they do, they're behind. People don't aren't as anxious to use AI to, you know, uh, spiff up their Instagram or, or, or whatever. So I, I think that they have challenges, but um, they're building their way out. You see what they're doing, releasing health applications, both open AI and Anthropic, to very, you know, uh, eagerly try to build up their models. Right. OpenAI hired, you know, Fiji Simo from uh, Meta to and, and Insta, Instacart to build up, you know, a customer model, a consumer model. So we have a, um, a shot of uh, the stock price of Meta. I've always thought that given just the proliferation of between Facebook, Instagram and, and oddly WhatsApp, actually, uh, that they should be able to use those platforms to, to really be able to build uh, on them. You know, even, you know, I know threads took off very slowly and, and some people have questions about it, but 
They've now captured an audience. Why do you think they haven't captured a bigger audience already? I think that, you know, it's it's not to, to the core of what they do. They everything they do at Meta is like a pivot from their original value proposition was to connect the world. So, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is obsessed with, you know, uh, staying ahead of the next technology leap. Uh, that's why he bought Oculus right. and thought that virtual reality, you know, and mixed reality was the next paradigm. And he wasn't going to look, lose that, even though it really didn't sync perfectly with the connect the world thing. Uh, AI gets farther away from that. So right. if he comes up with super intelligence, that's going to be great. But he's going to have to you know, weld it on to a model that they built very successfully um, to first connecting right. the world and now, you know, using people's information to provide them entertainment in reels and Instagram, Steven, things like that. I, I have two more questions and we have very little time, so I'm going to go for it. Apple. Um, lots of, by the way, speculation about the future of Tim Cook's role at that company and whether he's ultimately going to retire. There was a piece last week uh, that said he had told people that he was getting tired and that he uh, that there's been you know all these new names bandied about as there are big questions about their AI strategy. Speak to it. Yeah, I'd be tired too if I was trying to get AI into my product and really couldn't get that hap make that happen. You know, uh, I think look, you know. Uh, Tim has reached a, cert a certain age and, you know, in the next few years, if not this year, he is going to retire. Um, you know, I did, still don't think we have a clear successor, uh, Peg. You know, John Turnus, uh, who was the head of hardware, um, people think he's the guy. I don't think that's necessarily the, the, the case. Um, and you can't say that Tim has done a bad job because, you know, uh, he's exceeded all kinds of expectations from when he took over after Steve died. Uh, and then finally, Elon Musk, XAI, where do, where do you place that in this sort of pantheon of all of these different large language models? Always the wild card, you know, and, and Elon has his talent for kind of shooting himself in the foot. Now, all the people talking about an X is, you know, this sexual content, you know, allowing the people to, you know, take pictures of people, of, of women and strip them down to bikinis. Uh, that's not a wholesome thing. And it's not, I don't think, a good for uh, X. Big question, by the way, about whether Apple and Google's app stores should allow X to be downloadable, given that ostensibly that piece of it would break their um, content rules. Yeah, especially with Apple, which has been much more vigilant about keeping that stuff out. That, that's kind of out of character. But I guess, you know, they want to tread lightly around Elon.